What is going on, everybody? Bobby Five back with my man Eric Sheet Tabor. Uh, this is Friday, the what is it, the 26th? Um, we've had a you know, it's been a, a wild time, it's going to be a wild day today. I think there's going to be a ton of information that breaks late. Um, it's going to be a strange slate again, so I just want to keep everybody keep your keep just be ready for it. Um, we're going to help you try and get ready for the initial slate. I mean, but I'm just going to stress again, don't go crazy with your bankroll. Like, it's weird because in certain ways you could argue both sides of it. Like I, I think at the very beginning of the season when people, when things were unpredictable, I think it actually gave me a little bit of an edge. And I think that later, you know, the, the problem is you don't want to lose $10,000 on basically just weirdness happening all over the place that you really aren't even projecting the game. It's just, you don't even know who's going to play. Um, so just keep that in mind. Well, you know, what's, you know, what's good is that, is that, um, there's a little, there's a little insecurity, but but there's also a little bit of, of security now because the 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 trade deadline is now passed, so at least that risk is gone, and we just got to get like all the players like to their respective teams, right, and know exactly who's when when people are playing, and then and then I think projections will uh, will will adjust a little bit. Then we're then we'll be just at least at least back to the the normal NBA craziness. You know what I mean? Like exactly. like, like, like you know the regular NBA craziness is what it is. You know, with with the with the with the injuries and like all that stuff, and that that's fine. But, right. but throwing on the the um, the uh, the trade deadline stuff was a little uh, little little nuts, and we'll figure out the best way to handle. We were talking a little offline about about baseball because I know that um, Bobby's really stoked for baseball, and, be, and 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 Bobby's gonna get me get me more stoked about baseball. Um, uh, one thing that's good about baseball is that it's 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 you'll get some late lineup and lineup moves, but very, very, um, very, very rarely. Right. Um, so at least you'll be, and we'll be able to be better prepared for, it's like when we, when we, we do a baseball thing at, at like 12 or whatever, we'll at least, it, we're at least in the ball game of what we're going to play. You know what right, I mean? Like, right, exactly. As opposed to the NBA where we're saying, listen, this is like totally use, not it's useless, but this is like totally not going to resemble what our right. lineups are going to be at the end of the day. Right. No, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, that's, and that's what I'm going to encourage us to do today on this, this show is that we'll talk about some value, but the truth is that the value we're going to find later, I really believe that we don't, I think that it, we're still in the trade deadline mode. It's not like anybody's getting traded, but we don't know who's going to start for some of these teams. Right. We don't know like in Orlando, who's going to play. Like, it's like, right. it's bizarre. So, so we'll do the best we can, but uh, with baseball, it'll at least be a little more straightforward. Um, also got a couple of kind uh, shout outs from, from some people who, who actually, you know, um, are pretty, you know, uh, guys who I know, uh, our local sportscaster hit us up and said he appreciated the videos. I was, nice. was cool stuff. So anyway, we'll get into the uh, the slate uh, right now. Sheets, if you don't mind pulling your screen up, we'll go game by game because I think that is the only way we can tackle this monster. <laughs> yeah, well, again, I, as I, as I, you know what? I, I said it before. Um, I, I think this, these, these are usually Use, these are usually the Bobby slates. Usually, where he throws one lineup in and, and, and casts for all the money. Didn't didn't work out that way the other day when everybody busted. Not. <laughs> but um, but it doesn't change the fact that this is a usually a usually the type of a good slate. But we got to really, we got we, we we are eventually going to have to get a handle on on the Orlando thing and all that stuff. But yeah. we, we we'll we'll figure it out. But the, the thing is, before we even get to, it, I mean, like at least DK was sort of ahead of the curve a little bit. I mean, they did like, a nice job with Orlando. I'll give him that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they didn't make everybody 3K and stuff like that. Yeah, and FanDuel, it's a little different. <laughs> um, but we'll, we'll figure it out. And by the way, even with all this great value, especially, especially like on FanDuel, you don't need to always play all of it because there, there's huge range of outcomes for some of the – even if the guy's starting and projected to play 34 minutes, there might be another guy off the bench like Elise, an Elise Johnson type who, who might come along and, and, and just light it up. And by the way, what a call by you. Unfortunately, you couldn't play the guy and they had him for the wrong team. <laughs> but, but you said the other night, Elise Johnson breaks the slate. He broke the slate. The problem is you couldn't play him. He just I kept on getting to him in my optimizers. <laughs> but, they, but the part is it wouldn't have counted because it was on the wrong team. That, did you know that? Like it was that actually was kept showing up for Toronto. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it was not Brooklyn. All right, um, so let's get started with it. On the Brooklyn side, I think that, I mean, you go, you can start it off, but I'm pretty sure that we're, we're saying Harden is the top spend on the slate, and I don't think it's that close off the top, like off right away, you know, if he's, if yeah. he's available. Yeah, I pr I, I'm hoping he plays. Well, um, and tonight we don't have to wait till after, which is great. It's like an island game, sort of. Yeah, it killed me the other night because that the, the, even the pivots I wanted to make after just left me with so much Luca, which wouldn't have killed me normally, but Luca with – the ultimate floor game and Giannis with the ultimate floor game didn't happen. That was amazing. It was just amazing. Um, when I looked at my lineup and I had, 
I, want, I had Luca and like Malik Monk, and they both had zero. And then, like, and Malik Monk got, got, the, got the Christmas gift of garbage time to at least get me there. But yeah, um, well, he contributed to that garbage time too. He was actually playing great in that. That's, true, that's yeah. true. But I'll tell you, man, I'll tell you, you talk about a weird sweat. Like when you're watching a game either on the, on the app or the thing, and you have a bench guy, it, you, you really want him to get in when it's like four minutes to go in the first quarter. You know what I mean? Like right. if it gets all the way to the end of the first quarter and you still haven't seen him, you get really nervous. You know? right. <laughs> you never, right. You're just never going to see him. Um, but, uh, and then when you go to the place, like, tw- you know, when we play second quarter, then you will know, Oh God, now my max is 20 minutes or 24 minutes or whatever. But in any case, um, yeah, I think Harden is definitely the best spend. On, I you know definitely the best spend on the slate. Um, I don't think that, I mean, at least at first look that I'll have much interest in anybody else on Brooklyn mm-hmm. if he plays. Um, so for me, I, I'm just kind of hoping he plays and then I can play him. And if he doesn't play, then it's back to the drawing board, you know, with all this other stuff. Um, yep. So th- that's what I think about Brooklyn. Any, any, any different? I mean, do, you have, do you like anybody else on Brooklyn? No, uh, I, I think Jeff Green is, is in play, but I, I think we're, we're going to find better spots and better value to attack than that. So um, same thing with Claxton. Uh, but I, I just want to say if he doesn't play, there's guys who like don't even project currently. But I, I ended up getting onto him about 10%. And, and that was one of the few good things I did. That's Chris Chioza, if there is no Harden. The people all flock to Tyler Johnson and all the other guys, but I do think Chioza uh, seems to give him that extra little spark, and Detroit doesn't play defense. And Chioza, I just like better as a producer than, than Tyler Johnson, even though Tyler Johnson will probably play more minutes and be projected and all that stuff. But, uh, but mostly it's just Harden for me, assuming everybody plays right now. Yeah. On the Detroit side, is there anybody you like? Because I, I feel like – I, I feel like on FanDuel, there's a lot of arguments I could get, make for Josh Jackson. Um, I don't really see, a, and maybe Jeremy Grant, he's getting up shots and it's a good matchup, but I just can't see myself getting to these guys on DraftKings, even without DeLon Wright, because we're going to get Diallo tonight, we presume. Magruder's supposed to be back, not that he'll play much, but I, I just, I don't know if anybody's going to play over 30 minutes except for Bay and Grant, and they're going to they're gonna be pretty expensive. They're, I mean, they're pretty expensive, so... I'm not uh, crazy interested in anybody here on DraftKings. Sounds good to me. Yeah, ready to let's move on. I don't, want, I don't want anybody. Yeah, so this is going to be the weird one of the weird spots of the day. Um, I think you're going to let ownership dictate this play, but Robert Williams is going to project extremely, extremely well, regardless of whether he starts or not. What I would say is that there's a lot of things that could happen in this game. Um, Jason Tatum could play the five against Giannis somewhat. Uh, Robert Williams doesn't match up particularly well with Giannis. So it's not like, so when they play small with Giannis, the five or Portis, it's not like they need to have Robert Williams on the court in that situation. They really don't have a true other big, I guess, other than Taco Fall, but there's no reason to really play him except for some minutes against Brooke Lopez, maybe. Um, I don't see the, the, the absolute need to, to say, think that Williams is going to play over 30 minutes and put up, you know, 40 fantasy points. But I do think he, he would make sense. He does make sense as a play. Um, I'm going to let ownership dictate some of this because I, I think there's plenty of bus paths for him here. I mean, he just had this, his worst game in a while against this team. And it's just, I understand that, that, that Tice is gone and, and we have no Thompson and all that stuff. But it's not like this is a natural, you need a big man. So if, if everybody goes here on an 11-game slate, I won't. But if they don't, I will. <clears throat> does that make sense? I guess that makes sense. Um, I, th- I really feel as though I've seen this before. Uh, I don't exactly remember where, but there were games where the Celtics, I felt as though they had no choice but to play a big or whatever. And the next thing you know, you had like Jason Tatum playing the five or something like that. Um, right. So, um, I mean, with that said, I mean, he's been great. He's been uh, too, Robert, right? Robert Williams. So uh, you he really think he played 30 see- minutes in a game in his career, I don't think. Oh, is that, is that right? I really don't think he has, but yeah, sorry, keep going. But um, so he's, he's going to be, you think he's going to be one of the popular, you know, one of the he popular. Just, right? He's going to stand out projection wise because, and also people love him. He's one of the DFS darlings for good reason. He's a great fantasy point per minute producer. When you get minutes from him and you know, he's in also usually people who have gotten, everybody's had him at some point at low ownership where he's exploded for them. Um, so he's one of those guys, you know, it's like when Cantor w- w- would get a start before or, or, or anybody was out or any, any reason to play Cantor because you know he's going to put up fantasy points. So, yeah, um, I, I think there's a very good path for him to having a good game in an up-paced environment. But 
if he's going to be too crazy owned, it's a big enough slate where I don't need to do that. And I can honestly play DeAndre Ayton at 300 less, who has put up back-to-back 40s and has 65 playing fantasy point upside. And I know he'll at least play at least play all the minutes in the first three quarters. <laughs> it was interesting because I didn't when I first looked at it, I didn't really think that. Um, actually, I shouldn't say that. I, I, I would be pretty dumb to not presume that Robert Williams would be owned. But like at 6K. I guess he just has to get played. Well, yeah. what about what about what about other stuff from Boston? You like anything else? Not not particularly. Um, I think that Tatum always has the ceiling, but he really has not been the same since COVID. Um, really not the same. Even when he had good games, it was all of these guys have put up some games, but every, Kemba's been out, Marcus Smart was out, Tatum's been out. Um, there's just been so many guys out. Jalen Brown's numbers look a lot better than they really are. Uh, they also had two overtimes in that period. I, I, I like all these guys. I'm not sure I love them, how much I love them at this, at these prices. Jalen and, and Tatum would be, would make, would both, I mean, you can make an argument. And, and I think Kemba is actually maybe the best play. The way you want to beat him is from the outside. You know, Kemba had a 40, but, but I just don't think on this slate, we need to go there. Maybe I'll revisit that, but not right now. I don't have a ton of interest. And obviously if you're in a particularly saucy mood, um, you could play taco fall. Yeah, I don't know how that one will work out. So I, I'm, I'm going to skip the taco. I, I hate him in this kind of, I, I don't see how he could play a game in this matchup personally, but. Oh, when the, when it's, you know, if it's 102 to 75 at the end of the third. Oh, maybe. sure, sure, sure. I just meant like pace wise. Like he just, I just can't see him keeping up and down the court. Right. Um, yeah, the, I, I agree with you, by the way. I don't, I don't really like anything on the Boston side either. Nice, nice. Um, I do like, like, I will be absolutely first in line whenever there's going to be a low-owned superstar. And my initial thinking is that Giannis will be drastically low-owned. They did a really good job against him in the last game and really shut him down, basically. Um, It was his first game back. The minutes were a little bit lessened. There's a lot of reasons why I could see people staying away from him. And all I will say is that it's still Giannis. Um, I think that was more of an outlier game. The odds... What do you think the odds are of Giannis putting up like two 50, 50 or less fantasy point games in a row? It's just got to be almost non-existent, right? I don't know if he's ever done it. Um, I know it's the same team. I know they know how to defend him. I know there's some playoff history. It's a little bit of a different team than it was then. But I still think that Giannis at 10.7, I'm just going to point it out. All of these guys are too cheap again. And unfortunately, it burned us the other night because they all busted, which is really, I mean, I, that might happen like once a year where you get four guys and that could have spots to bust, all bust. But I'm going to say it again that Giannis is uh, he's the third the third priority spend up for me, but I behind Jokic and, and uh, Harden as of right now or sorry fourth, um, but I think that he's definitely on the board and if you're going to see him below 10 percent, which basically never ever happens with Giannis, uh, let's jump on that. That's all I can say. It's just a I, I just believe this guy get, has too many routes to get there and be the highest scoring player on the slate and he probably ends up the fourth highest zone, maybe even worse. I think you might be dreaming. Um, with you really think he's to, going to be popular here, huh? I do. Um, okay. We'll see. But you know what? It's the same four four guys, right? We didn't get a chance to really see what would have happened because Harden got ruled out, right? Um, when I said when I say Harden, Jokic, Giannis, and Luca from the day before, right? And we had the same discussion. I remember I I, I settled on that I was going to play even amount of both of all of them. But I agreed that Giannis is probably going to be the the Giannis and Jokic should be the two lowest own we never had a chance to see the results though because yeah, we did. i played Giannis and and, and luca together Giannis was like 13 14 percent in the big one which would make me think that given the result that he'd be around seven or eight percent on with Harden available well remember also is that there was a little um there's there was extra stuff in there because i, I remember because because yeah, Harden was um was questionable i think people were um more inclined to wait um for that news and this, on that slate, which probably, and that's why Luca just, just, just got all of the hardened ownership. Right. Um, I mean, if you can practically explain to me how people are going to play Giannis over these guys, I would love to hear it because I can't figure out how they're going to do it after the other game, but if they are, so I guess, I guess a good thing is she's, well, here's what we're talking. Let's say Giannis is 15% owned. I, and I'm playing a bunch of lineups. I would want 35% or more of them. If he's going to be 20 plus percent owned, I probably would want to be below the field on that. Does that make sense? If he's going to be, I got a better question. If he's going to be 15% owned and you're going to be playing two lineups, what would you do? I probably would, would think very strongly about playing him. 
Um, I'd play him in both. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's I don't know I'm about both because I think that one of the other guys might be low owned too. Um, oh, okay, okay. But but yeah, but anyway, I I, I hear you. If there was if it, I, that, that that's general strategy, I totally but, agree. But let me but let me ask you something. Let's let's compare him to Harden for a minute. I remember last, last in, in Harden's last game, we both agreed, and I still maintain this that there was there was like almost no bus path at all. Right. Um, with well, with the exception of possible blowout risk, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this was I forget who they were playing, but there was significant. There was a decent amount of blowout risk, um, and you know, he didn't play. I think that there's less blowout risk, on, at least on the Brooklyn side of it. You know what I mean? For, on the other side of it, in, in this game, so I think that Brooklyn, that if he plays, I think his path is. Well, then again, it was it was uh, it was Atlanta, right? Wasn't it a um, a faster pace too, though? No, it was, it was Utah, which, but Utah. It was the point was that it would have to be all him, which it would have been. Right. I mean, they ended up losing everything, which again, it's still probably going to be all him against Detroit. <laughs> and, yeah. and Harden, the one thing about blood you don't have to worry about is if they're, for the most part, he's kind of blowout proof. Like he plays the blowout run. I mean, if you look at his game log, they've blown people out. They've been blown out a couple of times and he just plays 37 to 40 minutes every game. Yeah. But I, I agree with you. I, I, I like Giannis's play. Uh, do you like anybody else in Milwaukee? No, nah, not on DraftKings. Um, I think that, you know, on FanDuel, I might have a little bit of interest in Middleton. Even on DraftKings, it's not the worst play. He's been – he actually has a good history against Boston, um, and including their playoff run. I think they won a seven-game series two years ago. And when Giannis doesn't perform, it tends to go towards Middleton, uh, especially in matchups like this with Boston. Like, I mean, it's just – they play each other five, four times a year, and they've had the playoff runs. So I, I would tend to uh, I, I'm okay with Middleton, but I think there's probably better plays in the slate overall. I guess. But you want to move on to Toronto Phoenix then? Yeah, this is an interesting one. You want to start it off? Yeah. So I guess we'll wait till we get to Portland to discuss this. But oh, I, oh, I mean, they got they they shipped Norman Powell off to Portland. Mm-hmm. Um, good luck guarding them. <laughs> good luck guarding Powell, McCollum, and, and Lillard all on the court at the same time. Um, Anyway, uh, so I like these guys. I, I, I like the I like the main Toronto guys. I like um, I know the matchup isn't great, but Van Vliet, Lowry, Siakam. I mean, definitely like all them. And then um, on Phoenix, yeah. I mean, again, nothing nothing particularly exciting. Eight, and I suppose, but again, you're, you're talking about a center position, which is always going to bring up good plays. Mm-hmm. So eight, I guess, is fine. And then the um, the guy who always shows up, but I've just that just never does anything was Cameron Payne, thirty five hundred. He's fine, and then uh, Booker and Paul. I mean, they're they're always they're always they're okay. I don't think this is particularly the time where they put up a ceiling. But if you want to play Lowry or Van Vliet um, or Siakam and run it back with one of those guys, that's that, that's totally fine. Um, I just have a weird feeling that there's going to be better points available elsewhere. Yeah, I, I would tend to agree with that. What I, what I would say about this is like, there is going to be the emotional Kyle Lowry. I mean, I don't know if you saw like he he was basically it felt like he was gone. I mean, at least that's how they played it off. He was you know crying, saying goodbye to everybody after the last game, wow. like he was being traded. It was really really looked got done. And by the way, they won that game in a blowout. You know, and and remember and that yep. played their best basketball in a really long time. I think you might see an energized version of this team a little bit going forward. That's and pretty smart. Maybe they get motivated. I just don't know that at these prices that I need to play any of the uh, – Pascal Siakam got into a big, big fight with Nick Nurse for being benched in the fourth quarter against the Cavs the other night. And since then, all Nurse has done is just played him back his normal minutes. Um, so even he would be in play here. They're all fine in play just on, like, on, the, on their face. But, like, the honestly, the most interest I have in this game is just to try and play the ceiling game with Aiton. We really haven't been wrong about this much sheets. Every time we pick on Toronto's big men, they, it just, it seems to work out. And I don't see, you know, with Aiton trending back in the right direction, you look at the minutes were de- de- decreasing. And now all of a sudden we're back at 32, 34, 34 and closing again. That makes me excited to have Aiton like at 6,100. So I actually do think Aiton has enough of a ceiling to where at 6,100, we, we, we want to play him and we want to like, I don't want to say he's a top play or something, but I, I think he's got the ceiling that could win you a tournament. Like he can put up 50 or 60. He really could. And I also think that Chris Paul and uh, I like the competitiveness between Chris Paul and Lowry here. I don't know how it shakes out. The prices are a little too high, but I do think you get a good game here with, 
with Paul or, or Booker, but I just don't think it's worth it to pay these prices on this slate. Um, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. However, I, 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 would, I, I would like to say that there, there, are, there are 11 games on the slate. Yeah. And if we assume that even 5% of games in general go to overtime, it rates like to be 50-50 that somebody goes to overtime. Mm -hmm. That's the way the math works. And there's no, there's no real game where – I'm just putting it out there – that there's no real game with a particularly high total that swamps the other one. You can argue Miami Golden State maybe – I mean, Atlanta Golden State maybe. Mm -hmm. So one of these games, I mean, might, might – it, it could go to overtime. So you could find a game to stack maybe, um, even the one that doesn't look particularly exciting, but like you know where the, the production is going to come from. Yeah. Um, like a game, like a game like this, like a game like the Phoenix Toronto game. Um, it probably, you know, it doesn't rate in of itself to be like an incredibly high scoring game or whatever, but can just play in the math that some, you know, that this is the one that does go to overtime and you know that you're having Booker and or Paul and or Aiton along with and L Lowry Van Vliet, you know, um, Siakam in there. I don't know. And you don't play anything just for overtime. No, no, right. I figured I'd bring it up because it is no, a I love that point. And, and yeah, I always tell everybody it's not just the overtime. It's the it's the last six, seven minutes of the regulation where you not only have all your guys on the court, you have them all, you have the best players getting the all the looks and and you get all the opportunity. Everybody's usage rate, if it's 30 before, it goes up to 45. You know what I mean? So that's this kind of a game. I, I totally agree with that. So I, I like that on, on big slates. I'm a bigger fan of sometimes semi-stacking more than other people are on some of the big slates. Yeah. Um, what about Miami? So this is going to be interesting. Miami and uh, Charlotte. Um, I think we're going to want to want to have interest on Miami side pretty much no matter who plays. Uh, how are you sort of ranking these guys? Well, first of all, if Butler doesn't play again, um, Fired up. Then, then it's oh, 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 unfree with all those guys again. I mean, by the way, I don't know why people still don't get it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, when, when I pulled up the hero ownership and he was only like 25 percent or something like that. Yeah, I guess just because he wasn't starting, people just get nervous or something like that. But yeah. you know he's going to play thirty six minutes. Right. I mean he just is, and he's. He, I mean that was, that was like the easiest play in the universe. I mean it doesn't right. always work, but the only but, problem with it was for tournaments is do you really want to play four cash plays in your tournament lineup on the same team? And that was what right. I wanted to because I did fade Hero in a couple lineups. Oh okay. Because I I just for that reason and I faded none in a couple on FanDuel because okay. I didn't want to have the exact same starting build without that many opportunities to get different. But on a slate like this that's 11 games, absolutely. Like I mean <laughs> there's other options. So so, so, so I will say this going before, you know, I, I, did, I posted in the discord, like some thoughts literally before Butler got ruled out. So before Butler got ruled out, I said, I think Bam is like a total smash. Right. And then Butler got ruled out and I'm like, uh Oh, right now it's like ridiculous. You, I mean, I actually played the FanDuel monster last night. Mm -hmm. He was 95% on. I played it too. And he was 95%, 95.5% on actually. To be specific. I mean, That's so I, I have to say that um, my, my thoughts on him remain the same. Um, he's, uh, if I think if Butler plays, I still think he's a smash play. Yep. They moved him to center on FanDuel. Did you see that? Yeah. They moved him on draft. Yeah, exactly. He's already been on draft kings, but yeah. They moved him to center, which, you know, makes it, you know, a little more interesting, but I still think he's a, he's a smash play. I mean, Charlotte, I mean, uh, good luck, <laughs> good luck matching up. Um, yep. And I think he's a terrific play. And I think I almost rather Butler play because mm -hmm. if Butler doesn't play, it's going to be the same shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, great. We're going to get Bam. He's going to smash. And and so is everybody else. Um, and I think, I don't know what I think about the other guys that Butler plays though. I don't, I don't know what I think about hero non and that type of stuff. For me, it's, 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 um, it's Bam, it's Bam. And then that's pretty much it. Yeah, it's so if Butler plays, it go. It, I would have it Butler then Bam. I have them really close. You would play Butler, okay? I, oh, I love Butler. Okay. Um, love, love, love Butler. Like I think he's like I, I honestly think he should be projected closer to fifty in this matchup. It's a phenomenal matchup um, with no one who can stop him, with no Goran Dragic on the court, with everyone else coming off of back to back. It just sets up perfectly for Butler. So I love, love, love Butler, and he's part of the reason why I might not have two spend ups when everyone might do that on a slate that's going to end up with a ton of value. So 
So, uh, so Butler, then Bam, but they're both awesome plays. I agree with you 100%. Bam will, I mean, Charlotte's problem is they don't have a true big. Um, so I, Bam is going to Bam is gonna crush in all kinds of ways. Rebounding, he'll get assists. He's going to have plenty of points. He'll have shot blocking opportunities. Charlotte can be sloppy. My, I mean, there's just everything leads to, to both of these guys, actually, for me. And honestly, like, even if all of these guys play, I'm interested in everybody. I think Kendrick Nunn is still too cheap on DraftKings with no with no Dragic. I think Tyler Hero is still a great tournament play with no uh, with uh, with no excuse me um, Dragic. Uh, on the back to back with a guy like Hero and a jump shooter, you don't generally those guys do generally have a little bit of a harder time, especially when they're not the focal point of the offense, which he won't be if Butler's back. Um, but I still think that there's enough upside in this matchup for him. And, uh, and if Butler's out again, I'm just going to say that one of the cheap guys who might pop up is, is Gabe Vincent. I just think that there's going to be really, really good value and maybe he'll be part of it. Um, I made the mistake of telling someone in chat yesterday that, that Toscano Anderson, don't, don't, don't lock, don't play him in that stack because there's better value. But that was before we knew for sure about Draymond and that, but if, I said, if Toscano was starting, that's a different story. And then of course, Toscano Anderson went crazy and, and the other value did very well too, but it just was like that Toscano Anderson was. Excuse me, excuse me. Juan Toscano Anderson did went crazy at like no ownership. I know it's uh, I mean, the hard part was like, so man, went man was great. You know what I mean? Man was, man was, well, I got very lucky in, in that, in that, well, lucky. I mean, it didn't work really work out at all, but, but, but uh, I was out when the news on Kawhi came down. Mm -hmm. I, maybe it came down, maybe I noticed it. I literally noticed it with like 15 minutes till the game started. So actually, it's where I was. I just basically just global swap Leonard out for someone in the late game. And then I just kind of, when I got home, I just kind of tweaked it later. I didn't have time to think of the other impact of the Clippers. So I missed the Terrence man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so that, so I missed him. So I ended up with like all the, all the Watts, you know, Anderson, <laughs> because, because I missed the man play, which probably oh, better, maybe it was a better play. You know what I mean? I don't know. Um, man was no man was unquestionably a better play. It was right. just a matter that Toscano yeah. Anderson happened to. I do like Toscano. I mean, look if you, if you get that guy starting, it's a different story. And we didn't yeah. have that information until yeah, three minutes before lock or whatever it was. Um, you like Charlotte at all? Anybody? I didn't like anything over there. Uh, I I think they're gonna have to play big, and I don't know how that's gonna work out for Zeller. So like, I don't love this. Again, I'm, we're gonna find probably better value, but. Uh, Biombo does stand out a little bit, like just that he might play more, you know, you'll see probably see him projected for around 20 to 23 minutes or something. I don't know. I don't see how it works out well for them if, uh, if they try to match up Zeller with Bam. So I think those 20 minutes could easily become 24, 26, 28, potentially, maybe that's reaching, but 24, 26, 3,300 as a starting center. I think that's okay. Um, I like Washington on FanDuel. I like Devonte Graham a little bit, but I don't think I'm going to end up getting too much of it unless I decide to play three guys for Miami or something like that. Um, those are the ones with the most interest. And then uh, Terry Rozier, I'm just going to like, these guys were all going to go nuts the other night. That game just turned into too big of a blowout. And I know this matchup's a little bit tougher, especially if Butler plays, but Terry Rozier has, you know, hasn't like been done anything incredible, but put up what would have been a 44 and probably a 50 in the two games that we've had without Lonzo. Um, always a heat check guy, probably not the right slate. That's all I had to say. Um, okay, so so Denver, um, Denver, New Orleans was a little, was a little, was a little tilting the, um, the, uh, the Jokic bust the other day because it wasn't his fault. I mean, he was, he was- He was playing he, fine was, and he got killed. The, yeah, but not even that, it wasn't even his fault they got killed. Like when he came out of the game, the second unit got run off the floor. And, and, and he never got he never had a chance to get back in the game. Um, so, uh, so, and he was just, he was literally, he was fine. He was, you know, 1.5 yeah. fantasy points per minute, like he, like he always gets, right? So, right. So, so he gets full minutes, he'll get his 55 to 60 and, and whatever. And even, and, and even on, that was on the back-to-back -to -back too. Yeah. So I think, again, I, my comment is the same. I think he's, he's a really, really great play. I think Giannis is a great play. I think Jokic is a good play. Um, I'm not. I, I'm not particularly con concerned about the Stephen Adams defense. Whatever. Um, I'd be concerned if I like someone that wasn't Jokic. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm. I'm not too worried about that. Um, so I do like him. You know, DraftKings are annoying. Not that they're annoying. 
I should, well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, they, they had Jamal Murray totally underpriced for his last game. And I didn't really smash the must as much as I wanted to when he was like 7,100 or something. And they, they, they fixed that pretty damn quick. So he's, mm-hmm. so he's now 8,200. Um, that's about it, man. Just, 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 just Jokic like anybody else. I mean, so I might take a flyer on your Jamichael green thing here a little bit. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there's a chance with that for him to play some minutes tonight. Um, there could be upside on the 20 or so, a little less than 20 that he's projected to play. Got a, he got a big old nine for me in this last game. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a huge fan of that one. Um, this is a, I mean, I'm trying to figure out who, so they're going to play the four. I guess if Nanaji gets in, then it will take away some of his minutes, but that's the only way I see him not playing like 22, 24. At that, which point I do like him um, if he's going to play that many minutes and potentially like even, I don't think he'll, he might close <laughs> um, depending on how the, how it goes, because, because, because New Orleans plays bigger, you'd think they want Jermichael out there because who the hell is going to guard, yeah, uh, who the hell is going to guard Zion? Like Millsap just isn't, just can't anymore physically. It's going to, it's going to have to be Millsap or green. Like, so they should, maybe they could try to nausea. I don't know how they're, I, I just can't see how it's going to work. <laughs> um, well, I, I like it though. I mean, that's, 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 that, that's kind of sharp analysis. I mean, if you think that, 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 that green is going to be the type of guy that they'll throw in there. Yeah. And he is, a, he, he generally is a three and D guy who, who can play big and, and, and also can get a lot of fantasy points in a hurry um, occasionally. So I, I think he's kind of interesting. Um, I love Jokic, but it's not, that I love the matchup or anything. I just love that he's 10, six. And again, yeah. I keep pointing out all these expensive guys are too cheap. So it makes it hard to, yeah. to love the, some of the other guys, you know what I mean? Oh, so-and-so is only nine K or so-and-so is only this, but yeah, but Jokic is only 10, six and he averages 60 fantasy points. You know what I mean? Like that's pretty, pretty basic math. You can do that. Oh, he's crushing for you there almost every time he steps on the court. So definitely love Jokic, even though it's not a good matchup. Um, I love Zion on the other side. I don't think that there is a physical way for them to compete with him. And as I just mentioned, I don't lo- like the thing is the rim protection isn't great for Denver, but what you do get with Zion is um, it, it, I don't think it matters that like, I don't like that Jokic could be underneath the basket a lot because Steven Adams is there. So it's not like he has the clear path to the basket. Like ideally Zion's dream, dream scenario. And that's why he plays every minute that, that Adams is not on the court basically because I, it's a terrible match for to have him with Adams on the court at the same time. And it's such a dumb, they made a horrible, horrible decision in the off season by signing Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe um, or getting Steven or getting Eric Bledsoe, I should say. Um, I, I, I love Zion. I think he's under projected. I think that there is a monster ceiling. I think he was going to have about 150 fantasy points against the Lakers the other night, but it was a blowout and he was just sort of coasting only played 28 minutes. Uh, you get Zion back to that 36 minute mark, a nice little break, basically. I think he's just, just crushes tonight. So uh, I'm going to call it right now. Zion's putting up 50 fantasy points for sure. I know it's not a huge, huge thing to say, but that is where I like it. Also, I think that is where, where I have him. And uh, Ingram's been really good lately and actually was really, really good in this matchup last time, um, which is funny because he was actually a little even better than Zion was. But I don't think that I'm going to go there at 8,200 today. I think I would rather just take the Zion. And if ball is out like we expect, it's right back. Nikhil Alexander-Walker is still too cheap at 5,300 if with ball out. Uh, Josh Hart is still in play, um, especially over on – oh, no, actually, they raised his price on FanDuel. Josh Hart is, is very much in play, though, even at 56. And as horrible as Bledsoe has been, 4,400 just for the minutes alone is hard to ignore if we have no Lonzo. So we're going to have to wait on Lonzo. I'm going to guess that Lonzo does sit. Why, 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 were, why were you guessing that? He's doubtful. He hasn't played, and uh, there's no reason to think it's going to change right now. I see him. Oh, I see out. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I didn't know that. Expect to miss the Friday game. All right, it's totally different then. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He hasn't missed anything. He hasn't played. Um, and we did. Uh, okay, so we'll get to other news. Um, the, so other yeah. thing I would just, the other thing I would just say, I mean, not that, not that this is determinative, but only because it's an 11-game slate. If, about Zion, I mean, he he literally hasn't gotten fifty on the entire on this entire panel, and actually the one time he got fifty, and even fifty isn't the greatest, right? Yeah, no, I hear you, but this is a different. I mean, it's it's they've been running him very differently, and like you look at 
So let's just, I mean, you have to look at the games. He put up 47 against the Lakers in 28 minutes when they were up by 35 points. I got you. He was getting 60 there. So let's give him 60 for that one. Um, <laughs> Portland, that was a blowout, the first one. So that's probably another 60, maybe 55. Um, Clippers, blowout, that's at least, well, that's probably not 50. Um, Cleveland, massive blowout, 32 and a half in 17 minutes. That would have been 60 probably. I mean, on pace for 70, but 60. Um, so there's a lot of things here. And then, and then you go back to just before the all-star break and actually he didn't have a game below 48. Oh no, he had one game, below. he had 46 and a half against Utah in one game. Every other game was above 48. So even if he's not there and also you're watching the development of a player, it's important that we stay ahead of these things, not behind them. He's, he's going to be the 50 guy on most night, more often than not, in my opinion, going forward. Yeah. I'm going to stick to, um, uh, if ball sits, then one of those two, like you said, what about the other guy from uh, New Orleans? The other, the other young guy, um, crap, uh, Kira Lewis. No, I didn't even like him. The, I, mean, I, I heard a couple people victory lap him the other day. Okay. Okay, guys, you got well, I don't know, he did something. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out. There. Yeah. He had one game and I like Kira Lewis in general, but, and actually like, like he may play minutes tonight. I mean, we'll, we'll see what they do. Like I, I with Bledsoe, I mean, that's the one thing that that's really confusing, but he only played 20. He hasn't played more than 20 minutes without ball. Okay. And in that 20 minutes, he had one efficient game. So I don't want to hear anybody else on other side taking huge victory laps. Oh, I knew he was going to play him because the Lakers are going to play 30 minutes because the Lakers are going to blow him out. I'm like, are they even looking at the numbers? He played 20 minutes. Anyway, that was in a blowout, a, third, a huge blowout too. So not interested for me, but I do, I do think that like on a smaller slate with not value, maybe he would be interesting. Portland. Um, yeah. So Portland, Orlando, I tell you, man, I, uh, I was telling you this offline. I, I really thought that, that you were going to bury people last night. Um, you, you had, I, I was, I was following Bobby's like bigger buy-in for like just a little bit. And he had, you know, he had the chalk Miami guys that were that had both smashed and he was sitting on CJ McConnell with like McCollum with like a billion fantasy points through like first quarter, two and a half quarters. And then Mitch Robinson had like, like six X through like, you know, the first half or something, God knows what. And I saw what was going on with McCollum and he was going freaking nuts. He actually like had a very pedestrian 51. I mean, he could have gotten right. much more than this. Right. Um, but then Lewis just decided he wanted to kind of just get his a little bit more. But um, so the, obviously the, the, the impact of this, uh, of this game is that, you know, Orlando is just, Boy, oh boy, you talk about a fire sale. I mean, they 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 really threw in the towel. I mean, getting rid of Gordon and Fournier and Vooch. I mean, that's that is rough. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't know how they did it, but DraftKings, they did they did okay. I mean, they made Michael Carter Williams 6,600 and um who who else on Teague is on this team? I don't know I don't know who's playing. I don't know who's on the team. You know what I mean? Like, I guess if I had to just stab right now before starters were announced before, you know, um, you have Terrence Ross is out, right? He's officially out. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, if Terrence Ross were in, he, he would probably get 60. Uh, he'd probably get 60 and they'd lose by 40. Um, anyway, now they're going to lose by 50. And I, I don't know. Bacon. Uh, Michael Carter Williams. I, I really have to wait and see. I hate to, I hate to do that, but you know, especially with Ross out too, you're going to probably have eight dressing and nobody any good. I just gonna have to wait and see who's starting. And I'll just kind of watch how projections come in after that. I, I really have no, no idea at this point what to do with that. I will say that on the, um, the Portland side, you could do it one of two ways. I mean, you, you could play, by the way, you could play McCollum. Like, for example, like you can play these guys. Let's skip this game because Damian Lillard just just a second got ruled out. Let's come back to this one. As I was saying. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Can you play McCollum. <laughs> I felt like this was kind of a, a kind of a piece of big news there. I was, I was saying you can play McCollum, and now you can especially play McCollum. Um, he's only 7,700 in a game that now is probably going to only be a 20-point game instead of a 40-point game. Um yeah. And then you can now call probably – you could probably – again, we have to wait, but probably also play Anthony Simons. I'm afraid to look what his price is, 3700 
trench still out, I presume. So basically all this stuff gets the sheer literally, I mean, like it's just a lot of guys you can play. So just got to wait on this game. <laughs> any, any other comments? No, I think we'll just have, but let's, let's check the projections and stuff after a little bit. Cause I'm curious. And then we'll also get different projections when we find out who's starting because yeah, I mean, it's going to be weird. Um, Cause we've seen that the, the, the Simons without McCollum thing, which is not anything too exciting. Yeah. That's been that great. Without Lillard, it could be something a little bit different. But Nurkic is also supposed to be back tonight, so it's a little tricky. Really? Yeah, but probably. I mean, look, he's he's it's questionable still, but he's projected to play like twenty uh, minutes. I'm just happy for him. Like, good for him. Me too. And but if he's out, I think that Cantor becomes one of the best plays in the slate because <laughs> um, there's nobody to guard him in Orlando. Um, I'm going to come back to that one because I, I just can't make anything without. They haven't even updated without Terrence Ross yet. So um, right now, I just have MCW uh, as my guy. It's just kind of dumb. Yeah, so we've got Houston information too. Officially, uh, no Kevin Porter Jr. tonight, um, and I think that the only guy who I'm especially interested outside of a game stack on DraftKings would be Christian Wood. If all these other guys are playing, yeah, you can't you can't play any um, um, John Wall. Good. Okay. It's a good matchup. He's uh, he's 8,300. Um, Who's left? What do you mean? On the team. I mean, like. They have more guys than they've had, like, most Yeah, but, of them. but who, who actually gets getting usage? I mean, Oladipo's now gone. No Tate, quarter. Tate, well, well Wood. Wood is going to get a ton. That's true. Um, I mean, he's, you know, Wall's going to have a ball, like, the whole game. Wood, um, Tate, um, I mean, they still have K.J. Martin, Daniel House. Kelly Olinick got moved. Oh. He's on Houston? Macklemore actually might get usage. Um, yeah, Kelly Olenek, is he? But I don't think he's going to play tonight. No, I, I, I imagine not. Yeah. Um, I mean, we'll see about that. My guess is buyout right back to the Heat is is my guess. Um, Wait, say that again? My guess is he just gets bought out and they send him right back to the Heat or something. Oh, is that right? I'm just guessing. I mean. Well, I have no idea. They have, they have I don't no, even know that's a thing. Oh, that's what teams keep. I mean, they, they don't usually go right back to the same team, but they'll do like a. I do think that he fits in with the although the Heat did sign Bielitsa or get Bielitsa so to replace him in that trade they did so we'll see maybe they maybe they are able to move Olenek or wait in the off season I actually don't know the, the structure of that deal well enough um, on the Minnesota side uh, I'm just going to tell you right there's like Carl Anthony Towns is going to massacre this Christian Wood or anybody where they want to throw at him um, I don't know it's that the, he it's makes the same that. freaking slate as the couple of days ago isn't it yeah well. Uh, not exactly. I and mean, he hasn't played Houston. No, but I'm just saying you have those four studs up at the top and then yeah, Towns sitting players. below them. Yeah. yeah. But this matchup is pretty much like, I just think that, 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 that he's going to smash. <laughs> One of here, Edwards should go nuts. Maybe both. Um, but I think Towns especially is a, a very good candidate in what should be a competitive game. So maybe if you did want to play wall or wood, even you're locking up your center spots, but I do think Towns, is viable, although it's just so hard not to pay that extra seven eight hundred if you can find a way to do it. Um, I'm but again, you, man, this, this, by this, the way, Towns was on. Town, all those guys were on the slate the other night, and Towns, even though he only put up, what did he put up the other night? Oh, he put up fifty six in the end. Um, Towns, I don't know what did he put up. It was against Dallas? He put up thirty eight. He was on the winning lineup in the uh, the million, I think, <laughs> with the thirty eight, because they, they used him and Porzingis as a back and forth, and Porzingis went nuts. Um, I'll tell you this this cat so to speak ha has has a, has a ceiling i mean he's yeah. been flashing it again yep it's uh it's definitely there and it's pretty much the nuts for the matchup as far as matchups go these are these are two of the worst three teams in basketball now now that now that orlando is taking over yeah orlando is now now the world well Houston, yeah, Houston, when they when they rest Wall, well, that's what i'm really worried about about this thing is like what happens when Wall is out when all these Aww. i don't know if I were them, I don't know why they're playing Wall right now. I know he wants to play basketball. Maybe play him like 20 minutes if I'm them. That's that's partly my thinking of Sheets with him and Wood, too, why I'm afraid of both of them is that they really don't need to overextend these guys. Um, there's really no, nothing to – there's nothing. Beyond nothing to play for, there's just nothing. You're just – why are you putting these guys at risk when they're the only guys you actually kind of want to keep? Um, right. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, Towns is pretty much the, the story for this game for me, but I don't know that I'm going to end up getting there because of the other – superstars we've got um indiana dallas yep so good 
Yeah. So for me, I mean, with all this other, all these other games of all this, all this nonsense, I mean, I, I kind of want to play Sabonis and Luca. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, I know what I'm getting at least. Um, mm-hmm. That's, 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 that's my opinion. And I, I wasn't going to go back to anybody else. Yeah, I think Luca with everybody there is probably. I'm sorry, uh, Sabonis with everybody back is not quite as interesting to me as he would be normally. Um, I actually think you can make an argument for Brogdon. He's really, really cheap on on Fanduel and DraftKings, and I know his usage has gone away a little bit with um, with Levert, but I still think that he's in play. Um, that, I mean, Levert's Levert's. You know, the usage has been really good. Um, put up a nice game the other night. I don't see like him as a bad, like, I just don't feel like in love with any of these plays for this slate. Yeah. The, the guy who I do have a little bit of interest in who has been really, really bad and, or was really bad last, last game. Um, I have a mild interest in Miles Turner just because I like how big men have destroyed these guys. And again, so you can make that argument for Sabonis, but Miles Turner is 5,500. So it's a cheap enough price tag where maybe he's a better play on FanDuel because the shot blocking and whatnot, but I am um, at 57, but I, I do think he's in play and I actually think that he's not a bad play at all. So Miles Turner is probably my, my favorite guy here along with Brogdon. Uh, and then on the other side, I, I love Luca obviously, and I don't expect him to have another performance like the other night. Uh, at the same time, when everybody was laughing off playing KP on a, whatever game slate it was, he was the yeah. absolute nuts and you can't win, couldn't win without him. And um I'm telling you, he's going to be, he has games like that. And yep. he, again, on FanDuel is uh, only 7,500. So I have no problem uh, playing Chris stops. And uh, on that same note on FanDuel again, Maxi Cleaver at 3,800, even on DraftKings, not the worst play at 46, but on FanDuel certainly stands out. Memphis, um, Memphis, Houston, I, I had is basically, it's the summary pass. Um, you mean Memphis, Utah? Yeah, I didn't like anybody in this game. I, I, I mean, if you had, if I had to, you know, if you, if you swore to me that this game was going to stay close, I would, I would probably have some interest in maybe Mitchell or Gobert or something like that. But aside from that, I mean, I really felt that everybody was kind of fairly priced here, and I had really no interest at all. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I feel pretty much the same way. It's Mitchell's on a run a little bit. Um, you know, always play the hot streak or something, but I just think there's better plays in the slate. I don't really want to do much with this game. I do think that with the way that the, the number of times that Memphis attacks the basket, that it probably gives Gobert a pretty high ceiling, but I just don't think I'm going to end up realistically getting to it. So I'm not going to waste time talking about it. So at Atlanta, Golden State, I mean, without even looking at, at projections or, or, or salaries, well, I got to go look salary a little bit. Is, is I, I just know what I'm going to do. I mean, and he's going to, he's going to be low owned again. Um, but I, I don't know whether it's James Wiseman or, or Juan Toscano Anderson or whoever the hell, or, 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 or Kevin Looney or whatever, but Clint Capella is going to murder these people. Um, I, I don't know. Ex- <laughs> I don't know exactly what, what, what is he? 8,000 or something like that? 7, 800. I mean, I don't know if the game stage closed. I don't know any of it, but I mean, you're going to put Wiseman on him? I mean, that's a free – I mean, he's going to he's going to obliterate this. Now, I don't know. I mean, look, you got Jokic, obviously, he's, takes up a center spot, and you can – you know, whatever. But um, hopefully – yeah, cool. Capella, look at him, projected for 38 fantasy points. Okay. And then how about the second half? I mean, that's – he's been just killing it. For, I mean, maybe I'm just lucky with him, but he's been killing it for me. No, we've been on fire with it. I mean, I I, 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 I said it, I think, on our last show. I was like, look, every time – One I, of us I, plays him every day. <laughs> well, I, no, I don't play him every day. I said every time I play – every time I play him, it's always got a purpose, and he always gets there. I mean, I one of us usually him plays him every day, I'm saying. Well, yeah, I don't – I just – I don't – I don't say I say him every day, but this is another great spot. Yeah. Um with Capella, you're obviously doesn't. I don't care about the matchups or anything. It's it's more just whether or not they can rebound with him because you're gonna win. You're gonna win with him by his rebounding and his shot blocking, um, along with you know putbacks and things like that to hopefully get him to twenty. And, and, and the other thing I will say is that I just I'm telling you I I I always enjoy having Trey and Capella together. I I just do. Yeah. Um, and if I can stack the game somehow, I, I love because I love when they run that pick and roll and Trey throws it up and Capella slams it and the multiple fantasy points. And I just just I just like that. Um, and then when the, he rolls and sometimes he floats it up, there's always just the possibility that you're going to get fantasy points when they run that shit together. So I do like playing both of them. 
Um, and I would play them both together. Uh, for me, I didn't like anybody else on Atlanta. Uh, we did very nicely with the, with the Bogdan play. Um, and you can certainly play him again. Um, uh, I'll let you talk about that. Maybe, maybe he's all right still at 4,600. I don't think he's going to play 32 minutes again. And those people who don't believe in narratives are out of their mind because <laughs> he, he hasn't scratched the surface of 30, 32 minutes or whatever. He had one game where he kind of did in a blowout and he played 32 minutes in that game. So tell me that it doesn't matter what happens and, uh, and I'll tell you you're crazy. Even the analysis we're talking all about it too. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like people are just so stubborn and so honestly, sorry to say it, stupid. Um, oh, and you know what I did? I did good. I mean, I did so many nice things last night, but I did a couple of things really poorly, which is why I lost yesterday. Yeah. I actually ended up like just kind of fading the fade. And I actually did play Wiggins last night. Um, I just figured off the bad game. Um, he was I figured monthly, I would, but he was hugely popular, wasn't he? He was like one of the most popular players in the slate. Did, um, not in the did draft games, so. though. I thought he was like 45% or something. In my yeah. tournament, he was. Oh, well, can't but, be. Whatever. But they uh, all were they all were uh, really highly owned because Draymond was out, except for. Oh, all right. And so and so for, on the Golden State side, I, I guess the same guys are going to look good. Right. So it's going to be Wiggins, Wiseman, Oubre, um, Jordan Poole. Uh, they're all going to they're all going to look pretty good. And we have to see who's who's playing with Green. Green doesn't play. I'd go right back to Toscano Anderson. Um, I don't I don't think there's any news on Green right now. Um, I guess we'll just take a look at it. Yeah, let me see what his thing was. Um, wasn't it an Ill illness yesterday? Uh, COVID yeah, it was. It was an illness. Non-COVID illness. Same thing with Jimmy Butler. So the thing is, if they what that means, though, is if they play, I think we can expect them to be good to go. There's nothing going to be limiting, limiting them in any way, okay. um, which in Jimmy Butler's case matters. doesn't matter quite as much for me on Draymond's, although I don't think it's like the worst play in the world um, if he was to play. I really don't. Uh, with all these – but if he does play – I think we, I, 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 I don't have a ton of interest here at these prices. I think pool is fine. Yeah. Um, I think Wiggins is, is fine ish. I'm just going to say to people, like even Wiggins yesterday, he, this is the kind of thing that frustrates people. Like he went like in the second half, I think he went like nine minutes or something of playing on the court without a fantasy point. It's it's it, he can be well, that's, rough. That's, that's what you get with him. I mean, you know, you're going to have to deal with some huge variance. So when he's going to be popular and project well, you, you know, a lot of the times you're better off fading him. Now, some of the times he'll put up a 66. Well, that's pretty rare against Memphis like he did. But I don't think that we should put him in as like this lock. And no. to be honest, like, why is he so much ahead of, you know, I understand he's been more productive, but I'm willing to throw that out and play a lower owned Ubre or something like that. But I just don't know if we need. Maybe, maybe play none of them. They, yeah, they priced them up decently. Um, uh, I know, I mean, I just, that, that's sort of, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at. It, unless we have Draymond out. And if Draymond's out, I think I will, I will take some stabs there, especially with Poole. Um, do, you, do, you, do you like Trey and, uh, and Capella or no? I think playing Trey, like, people have got to realize what you're playing right now. I've watched, I watch these guys play. They're a much better basketball team because Trey doesn't, is not a fantasy producer anymore. Right. That we can count on. There's a reason Trey's not 10 6 anymore, like he was at the beginning of the year, because they're actually playing good basketball. And that means it's not all him getting it, all him creating every single thing. Um, and he's been more efficient and better, but his numbers are not. His usage is still good. Um, still, like, I would play Trey over Lillard. Uh, well, Lillard's too late, but it, he's not playing. But his, his, his usage is, is still very high. Um, the minutes are still really good. Yeah, it's, it's a, and it's a good matchup. But we've seen this a bunch of times with Trey lately and talk about guys who haven't cracked 50. Like he's right. more expensive than, than, than Zion and he's not even close. Right. Um, okay. So at, at, a, at a much, much, much stronger position, that's my only argument. But this matchup, if I just looked at it and I said, oh, 9,100 Trey and all this, it's like, yeah. But then I also think other people are going to think that too. Um, I love Capella. I'm with you on that. And I think that John Collins is a good sneaky play with a ma massive upside, but uh but as of right now, it's, it's surprised to not be a little bit more interested in this game. I, I'm really not. So we have um, the uh, we have the the is this an ESPN? This must be an ESPN game that the LeBron and versus Cleveland thing. But there's no uh, little little la lacks the luster, huh? Like there's no LeBron, no AD, and uh, the Lakers in Cleveland that is two really really bad. I mean the Lakers being one of the worst teams right now in the NBA at the moment. <laughs> What are we doing here, Sheets? Anything? Yeah, first, first of all, something to look for. Um, uh, 
we, we, we talked about Denver already, but, but just remember to everybody throw into your, your mix is that, is that JaVale McGee was traded from Cleveland to, to Denver um, to give, you know, obviously in some respect to give Jokic some back, you know what I mean? Some backup, uh, some backup minutes over there. And I was a little disappointed. I didn't get a chance to see the McGee revenge against the Lakers. That would have been, uh, <laughs> that would have been interesting. Um, I, we saw, guess, we saw, we saw Dwight's revenge last night. That lasted all of six minutes. That was a, such a bunch of horseshit. But it was that. What is that, is that one of the worst? I thought that ejection was. A, first of all, the guys are a joke. He and Harold are such a bunch of horseshit. I love. Did you see what Doc Rivers said though? Because Doc Rivers no. not, he coached both these guys, um, coaching uh, Howard, but has co- you know coached Harold last year, obviously for the Clippers, and obviously didn't like Harold very much. This was a very no. popular. He said. He, they said, "What did you see out there?" He goes, "I saw. I saw a couple of clowns acting like clowns on both sides, and that's the truth. They were acting ridiculous." Um, yeah, but the referees acted like clowns too. I mean, the- and the referees too. They should. It, they, it was just ridiculous. Um, but this game, I, I don't really have a lot of excitement for. Um, uh, maybe I'm missing something. Sheets. I I think KCP is really cheap. I think that Schroeder is in play, and I think that Kuzma would be in play if he stayed a little cheaper. Um, he, you know, Kuzma's I don't know. Very, but- Kuzma is very tilting to me. He is, but he actually ended up. He still ended up usually getting there lately. It's just. It took, him like, it, took him, it took him like 10 shots before he got his first rebound, I think. It was like, it's like a little, a little He's more. weird. He just, he, he, you know, it depends on how the, the game's going. But usually he ends up getting there. I mean, he had nine rebounds yesterday. He's been rebounding the hell out of the ball. Um, I guess Kuzma and, and <laughs> Kuzma's expensive, though. I just think this is mostly like not a game that I have a ton of interest in. I do think at some point Taylor, T- uh, Horton Tucker is going to be a great sneaky play, but I don't think you need to do that in this kind of slate. They're not giving him, they're not giving, I don't think they're giving him. Uh, the, I told you it's because his defensive rotations are so bad. I'm surprised they were giving him minutes before, but he was bailed out by having a good defense around him. Um, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's as simple as they're just not going to give it to him. I just think that they will when they're desperate and when he gets going, he just hasn't gotten going in any of these games. I'd like, uh, I like, as you would say, I like Sexton fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and I like, um, I like Jared Allen. Sure. Um, uh, and on the Lakers side, you you hit on it. Uh, Schroeder would be my favorite play, I think. And maybe maybe you can play. Uh, maybe you can play Harold. Um, it's kind of a I don't want to say bad. It's not a bad matchup. It's fine. I, I can't play Harold. I, he's, I never, mean, he's, he's never yeah. he's never gotten there at this price. I just took, keep telling everybody like this, this is the dumbest thing people are doing. And also like like what's his name was back last night. Gasol was back, and Harold was still like poppy. I'm like, what is going on with people? These projections are just wrong with Harold. He's not going to. He's not he's playing his thirty-five minutes. He's just not doing anything. I mean, like, I'm not just not doing anything. He's not playing thirty-five. But, but he's but, got three, three, thirty-four, thirty-three. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I mean, yeah, but what are <laughs> the guy? Like, literally, we're acting like his median score is his ceiling, and that's what really disturbs me about this. Like, what do we have? Is I mean, sure, something could happen against this team, and he could put up a monster game. It's there, fine. That's all. I, there's saying. nothing. There's nothing about him that I that I find desirable, um, personally. You like Sexton? If you, pl- I presume Sexton's playing. I hope so. I, 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 because we won't know, and there's not really any pivots, and I don't like anything that much. I probably will just ignore it. We're gonna go uh, with. I did, I did mention the other night though that one little one few things I did right was I stuck with my Larry Nance. Nance, it's weird that Sexton being out actually helps him, but he actually did get to like run a little more of the offense. He had five assists, you know what I mean? And he ended up putting up like 47. Um, I'm not going to play him tonight, but I just think that's something to keep an eye out for if we know Sexton's out early in general. Although even at this price, I probably still wouldn't go there on this slate. I would go back and take another shot on um, some of the other guys who were really bad. Chetty? Yeah, Chetty. Chetty would be the best one, but even his price is up. Yeah, I don't. I don't love anything here. I, I would probably just play Chetty on Fanduel if uh, we if we thought Sexton was out. Yeah, Chetty tilted me the other day. Yeah, so so real real quick on on uh yeah he you know he really tilted me sheets is I pl- I switched so many Bogdanovich lineups over to Chetty it's actually I don't, even want, I don't even want to talk about that. And I mean, then I, well, it's even worse. A ton of them on to Sterling Brown. Ugh. I saw that on your lineup. I, Ugh. Ugh. I, I mean, I just saw the minutes. I couldn't resist myself. I told oh, her, right. I kept screaming back to win that freaking big buy-in tournament. I had no business, not win it too. It's just catching that big buy-in tournament, I had no business playing. Got very lucky with the big Capella, Trey Young run at the end. And yeah. then uh, and then I looked and I'm like, I really, des- I deserve to lose because this is the top, this lineup I have freaking, 
Chetty instead of Bogdan. So I, I did it on purpose too. I said, you know what? I don't want three Hawks. That's right. why. It's, but anyway. Oh man, it's brutal. Um, all right, real quick. I'm just going to, before we just talk really quick about FanDuel, I'm just going to say my best plays on DraftKings or my guys I've circled throughout this are just in no order of any kind. The Orlando situation, obviously, we have to figure out. Uh, Harden, Zion, Aiton. Uh, I do think Michael Carter Williams is the first guy who stands out from from uh, from Orlando. McCollum, Giannis, Luca, Capella, Nunn, Ball. Um, wait, that's not right. Not Ball. I don't know who that is. I can't read my writing. Butler. Oh, about Bam. Bam uh, or Butler. Uh, Butler if he plays. Jokic and uh, Nikhil Alexander Walker if. Uh, as long as well as the other Pelicans backcourt with uh, no, if there's no Lonzo. Yeah. Just gonna, just, just, I'm just gonna, you're just gonna have to wait for mine. Yeah. Fair enough. And oh, and by the way, just uh, for those of you that care, whatever. I, so I'm not going to be at the, uh, the live thing today. Uh, mm -hmm. We're doing a, doing a Passover tonight. And My oh kids, yeah. Kids nice. Are in town. Nice. Um, and guys, yeah, if we, again, let me know what you'd rather do for these ones. We could do a quick video that ends at 3.30, 6.30 Eastern, or we can do a Q&A, which most of you prefer the Q&A because we can actually get interactive, but I'm happy. Well, because what, what was happening, Bobby, is, is I thought that people would get, I mean, not that it's DraftKings fault, but I thought that people got a kick out of actually seeing like the building of the lineups and stuff. But now that like, I yeah, can't really right. do that. Yeah. But, but we can, and we can for FanDuel and I can probably shift it, but I mean, even, even still, and I will be back home shortly. But like, I don't have all my screens around, so I can't like shift everything exactly. So I'm working on my little thing and trying to figure it out. And it just gets a little messy trying to work a bunch of lineups in. But I'm happy that we're here for you guys. And and soon enough, we will be doing that exactly. I mean, we'll, we'll prioritize that to where it's actually done. Um, and again, guys, reminder to, to, to let us know some other stuff you'd like to see on the site. I got some good information yesterday from some people and uh, we're, we're putting it together. So there you have it. You want right, to uh, do some some yeah, positions uh, sheets uh yeah do you want I, I can start off at point guard if you want um okay. uh, i think that uh michael carter williams again i just mentioned is is one of the priorities today wow um brogdon i'll just say again is really cheap over here um brogdon and jordan pool like i think i would take brogdon in that it's pretty close um the other cheap, like, I don't really love everything else. I mean, Chris Paul's fine. Uh, I think mostly like it's Luca. I do. I, I think Trey's in play. Um, Luca, Trey, Paul, Brogdon, Schroeder are probably my favorites, but I don't like feel incredible about. I like MCW and Luca the best, I guess. Um. Yeah, I think you hit it right on the head. So, so I like Marco, Michael Carter Williams, and, and between Brogdon and Poole is my next. Um, and obviously, the spend ups you you hit on. So, so that I I real literally nothing to add. Maybe, maybe Terry Rozier, um, but that's about it. That's that's pretty much it for me. So uh -huh. shooting guard is 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 C J McCollum, uh, McCollum uh, with Lillard out. I don't care what the spread is. I don't care what the blow. I mean, he's just. He's just not not getting there. It's just, it's just not not yeah. possible at that price. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, and likewise, I think that if um, if Butler sits, you go right back to Hero um, at fifty two hundred. Not to mention you got Harden. Right? Right. So I, I, Harden and McCollum are going to be the two best plays. And then, then you want to you know you want to screw around. You want to play um, Dwayne Bacon. I don't know. You want to play Josh Jackson. Uh, try that but cj mccollum is going to eat up all the points in this position along with Harden. i think yeah i agree um if you're going to pay down i think you're going graham or josh jackson personally um or or the middle tier play would be wiggins um yeah that's pretty much all i got there this is i'm telling this mccollum is going to be like 75 percent on right yeah, and there are pivots. I mean, it is a back-to-back -back for a guy coming off of an injury. Uh, the key, oh, do we have no Lon – we must have no Lonzo out all of a sudden because everything just changed. Yeah. So we must have Lonzo out. So so Nikhil Alexander-Walker, I'll put ahead of these guys, except for okay. maybe. Um, what position is he? He's shooting guard. You're going to put him ahead of these guys, though? He's going to put up 30-plus fantasy points. He's 5,300. I don't – Well, hang on. I mean, we, we, could, we could debate this a little bit. I mean – He's 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 fifty three hundred. 
in this last game, I mean, he would he was kind of a struggle to get there. In a blowout, and he got there at 30? Yeah. So he's put up 30 and 33 in two games, one of them against this team, 5,300. Okay, I'll, I'm with you. That's fine. Yeah. I don't, I don't see any problem with it, but. Oh, no, I mean, no, I don't, I don't, I'm not that. I'm just saying that I still think that, that point per dollar, I would still, I would still think McCollum would be better. May, uh, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe, we'll maybe. I mean, there's huge <laughs> blowout risk in that game, obviously, too. Um, does change things a little bit and much less blowout risk in the New Orleans game. There is. Although even in the blowout, he Alexander Walker is blowout proof. So somewhat. So, um, all right, uh, small forward. Uh, this oh. is gonna, boy, they've updated and Josh Hart is not projecting up here. What is going on here? Why is Josh Hart, where is he playing? They moved Josh Hart to shooting guard too? Jesus. So he you have, sure that's so dumb. I mean, can I just, I'm just gonna, and just so frustrating when guys who never play a position are being made, moved to that position. He doesn't play that position. <laughs> you have Bledsoe, you have three guys, their entire backcourt, Bledsoe, Alexander Walker, and Hart are all playing shooting guard. How is that possible? It just doesn't make any sense. Small forward is gross. Yep. Gordon Hayward. Yep. Actually, that's, you know, I can get behind that play. I like that play. It feels, feels solid. Gordon Hayward and Jalen Brown as usual. I mean, like. Yeah. Maybe one last chance for Michael Porter Jr. to show off before we get uh, Aaron Gordon in, in the mix also. Um, what about Jimmy Butler, though? Jimmy Butler is. Oh, I keep forgetting. He might play. That's if right. he plays. And his project. I'm just going to say right now, like, I think his projections are, are way low. I think he should what be. Is, what, what are they giving him, 50? 47. I think it should be 50 plus. Okay, fair enough. No, no, I mean, it's way, way maybe an exaggeration, but, you know, that's. Um, but other guys like James Ennis are going to play a boatload of minutes tonight. Um, both Bogdanoviches are, are okay-ish. Um, this is not the best position on the slate. Chris Middleton, I mentioned, has a good history against Boston. Certainly expect 5X-ish from him. Um, yeah, it's, it's – uh, if, if, if Sexton, if we get the news early, then Osman becomes a great play at small forward. Um, or not a great play, a good value. Um, boy, it's not, it's, it's where we, I guess what we're doing is Butler. I'm going to have a little bit of MPJ. I'm going to have a little bit of Ennis and then Hayward, but Butler and Hayward seem to be the standouts to me. Hold on. All right. Okay. Just give me one second. Yeah, do your thing. Oh. Yeah, I'm recording. Do you guys get to see it in real uh, things? What is this, what is this thing that survive? What is this? Oh thing no! I, don't know what, I just I just got off the. Got oh, off. I never I never seen that before. I just I don't, know, I don't know what this is. Um, all right, power forward. Um, it's a, it's probably something I'm not eligible for because of my state, actually. Ah, uh, gotcha. Power uh, forward. There's, I mean, your Zion is much cheaper over here than he is on on DraftKings. Um, so I'm going to start with that, and then also uh, Giannis obviously remains a good play regardless of where he is. And then, if you wanted to pay down, you could. I, I could. I could talk to you about your Jason, the Jason Tate thing, but I just. I don't know. I think I'd rather play uh, PJ Washington at six K. Um, yeah, definitely. I don't think that's a. Yeah, I mean. Uh, I and then. Uh, thirty eight hundred. I mean, it's not my usual thing, but Maxi Kleber is thirty eight hundred. Um, I love Kleber. If, if you need it, if you want it. And then, uh, as usual, Kristoff is cheap. It's at thirty five. 7,500. Yeah, I like uh, Cleaver and Kristaps both. Um, I like Giannis. <laughs> um, uh, and Zion. I don't have a huge pool uh, of power forwards here. What do you do with something like Washington? Like, like the idea would be, okay, so they need to have someone in there to match up with Bam. No, and... he, just, he just always plays Washington. Oh, okay. He just, I mean, he's, he's, what is he is, I mean, he's their guy. Like the, it's actually like kind of a worse matchup for him in a sense, because the, his best production and their best production is when he gets to play this, this small ball five, and that's not going to happen as much with Bam on the court. So watch uh, at center, watch for the, um, that Cantor stuff you were talking about, right? I, I don't know what his price is over here, but. Um, yeah. I, I don't even know what his, he's 6K. Um, that could be interesting. 
But yeah. Robert Williams is 6K. We talked about him. Uh, and then, oh, Bam, right. So so Bam, Bam and Christian Wood are both very, very strong plays. Yoke, oh, wow, center's rough, huh? So you can play Jokic or yep. Bam or Wood yep. or Williams, or you can go right back to the James Wiseman dumps, dumpster fire. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with center. What about uh, going back to our guy Capella over here? Right. I mean, like lower ownership. Um, he's got to be all those guys. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, what I would say for him, though, that he's got going is that we know there's a shot blocking upside here. He's blocked 10 shots in a game this year. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's huge. And he also gets steals. So all things being like, actually, Bam is similar enough, though, like. He doesn't have the same shot blocking upside quite, but he still has a, an upside. Um, well, Bam is, I think, going to be the most popular, isn't he? So Butler's out. I th I would think that Christian Wood would be pretty popular. Oh, no, Robert, um, Robert, Robert Williams too. I forgot about Robert Williams. And and Jokic's price is just kind of a joke. Like, yeah, yeah center is kind of loaded over here, um, just from a, even a projection, from every kind of standpoint. And. And by the way, even if Wiseman, like, look, he's not, if he plays another 30 minutes, you're not going to get 10 fantasy points out of him every time he plays 30 minutes. Now, it's not a great matchup, but he's 4,200. Right. Yeah, um, I know. I don't know if you want to do that, though, because there's just a lot of real points to get here. And even as much as I like Turner, and I mentioned that earlier, it's kind of harder when you start seeing these other options that just aren't that expensive and have massive upside. Like, I'm not even considering Cat over here. Because, I mean, you have Jokic is literally right there, just a few hundred more or whatever. And then you've got the 8K guys that could actually be – I mean, Capella and Bam could outscore Jokic tonight. Capella and Bam could outscore um, – yeah. They could. I mean, just with the shot-blocking upside. We've, I'm not saying they will. I'm just saying, like, maybe one out of four times they could. Like, you can – I mean, you get six blocks from one of those guys. Jokic is not going to get six blocks. You know, that's 18 fantasy points. That catches you up. So you only need – you can have, you know – you, you, you can have six less assists than Jokic and, and eight less real life points. Maybe, maybe, so, maybe I should have more respect for the Steven Adams defense. Maybe, maybe, maybe Jokic is a little more of a fade than I thought. It's just so hard with him, man, because he never really fails. Like in, unless, like you said, the blowout, like when does he really, really fail? Basically never. Right. I'm just overthinking it. I just, I just see so many of Jokic's points come from these like, short shots and putbacks and get the rebound and put it back, whatever it is. And I, I, you'd like I, to think that Steven Adams could stop that part of it, at least. But no, but no, what he can't stop is the fact that at the top of the key, this oh, I guy gets the ball every single time. I understand. He's a 43% three-point shooter who doesn't take that many threes. He uh, runs every bit of their offense. He gets the assists. He gets, he's always going to end up in double digit rebounds pretty much. Yeah. Um, I mean, he's had the, the only games I'm looking at that he's had less than 60s were blowouts, all right. of them. Yeah. except for the one against Dallas. He had 50, um, and that was a back-to-back. -back. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's just a lot of good plays, but I think that I like Bam. I like the Bam Wood Capella range here, and I also, you know, in addition to him. So I, it's going to be a, it's going to really depend on the rest of my lineups. I might have to, not because I don't like center, but I'm not starting with center because I don't think you have to. You have to play one of those guys. There's a lot of good options, so I'll probably just try and fit it in when depending on my build okay just a couple a couple of notes again like so i'm going to be out for today's nba live thing um and over and and the mma i'm going to post an mma thing um, i've been waiting because one of the fights is still up in the air i just want to wait wait as long as i can so that'll be probably posted overnight again i'll just put it on the youtube thing. i'm not going to make a big deal of it i'll put it in the discord and for those of you who do follow the nascar stuff i mean what, what happens with the nascar is that they're not even releasing the starting grid until like an hour before the races because there's qualifying right before. So I'll, but I'll, I'll probably put something in there. And with respect to again, NBA over the weekend, again, I'll, I think that what's worked for me uh, for most people is I'll just, I'll just pop in at some point, just say who I like, you know, whatever it is and with, with all you guys knowing that, that it might not, you know, everything things can change or whatever it is just, you know, again, just so just so you guys know what, what it is. I mean, it's just, that's what's going to be in it. Bobby, I don't know if you're going to be right. You're going to be right to answer some questions. That's cool, too. We'll, yep, play, we'll yep. play the weekend by year, I guess. Absolutely. Sounds good. And, uh, yeah, no matter what on the weekend, I should at least uh, be able to uh, keep track with you guys and all that stuff. And, and go, Bobby, with the, with the match play. Hopefully we get you a couple of guys playing on Sunday. Yeah, let's get, uh, let's get some wins for guys like Ortiz. And, uh, and good Johnson, Johnson could use a win right now. Um, Sounds good to me. Yeah, a lot of 2-0s and, and a lot of 1-0-1s.
All right, uh, guys, let's do it. Uh, good luck to everyone, and we'll see you at the top of the leaderboards.